Hey everybody, here I am uh, in my workout clothes. I thought I'd be able to like shower and get dressed nice and professional for this video, but I ran out of time. It's my spring break, and so I am here delivering to you seven steps to take this summer to have a super productive academic year. And today we're on step four. Before I tell you what step four is, I want to... Um, just make a couple announcements about the I Should Be Writing group. And one of them is that I posted yesterday a, a little survey in the group, a little poll it's called in Facebook that you just have to click the answer and you can actually add different options and whatever. You can vote for more than one. Um, because I'm planning a webinar for um, not this Friday, but, but next Friday, most likely. Um, but I'll be announcing that date officially in the group. So I'm planning a webinar uh, for next Friday and I'm asking you all to vote on the title. And the current winning title is um, How to Create a Publication-Focused Career Roadmap. So um, that actually, I mention it because it goes right into today's step of the seven summer steps. So, today's step of seven summer steps is to make a plan. Um, summer is a great time to be able to stop and kind of reflect on the past year and on the next year. So again, in likely that webinar that I'm going to do is going to be about creating a publication focused career roadmap. and. What I mean by career roadmap is something that will be, there'll be like a short term plan, there'll be like a year, but then it will also project out five years down the road. Um, and remember, plans uh, are just plans. They don't have to be, they're not, you know, written in stone and, and things can change and happen. But having a plan is going to give you direction and focus. So these kind of this little set of, um, of steps that I've been talking about uh, yesterday, today, and tomorrow are all about mindset. So mindset's a super important, hi Lisa Lopez, um, mindset's a super important um, part of academic writing. So, um, so that's why today's step number four is make a plan. Because when you sketch out what you're going to do over the next year and really think long term, you um, hi, you um, stop living your academic life like putting out fires. So there's two two problems there, right? Um, if you kind of live your or if you are doing your career in a reactionary way, like something comes up and you react to it that then you're never going to feel like you're in control of your time and your publications and, and what's going on with your career. And so a lot of times what happens is we get out of our PhD programs, we hopefully get a job, right? And then the next craziness starts, hi Samantha Roberts, um, the next set of craziness starts because either you need to go from whatever job you got, maybe it's not tenure track, to a tenure track job, or you're on the tenure track. And no matter what, you actually kind of need to be acting like you're on a tenure track and because that's going to make you more, in terms of publications, not always possible, and we can get in a big conversation about that, but the idea is that you are going to be more mobile um, and more marketable if you have public, like your publications leading up to tenure um, in a row. Again, there's a lot of different things I'm, you know, that I'm glossing over here by saying that. But the idea is that we want to be driving that, that plan or driving what's happening and not just reacting to things that come up. What I mean by this is a lot of times, and this happens in our own department um, at my university, um, the junior faculty are like, they come in, they have all this energy, they're so awesome. And what happens? They get put in charge of stuff that they should not be put in charge of. And we have a really bad habit of, you know, 
you know, wringing the, all the juice out of our junior faculty way too early in their careers. And then those people are overwhelmed by what's going on and they're just trying to do the job and they're never publishing off the disc, they're never starting a new line of research or continuing the line of research of the disc. This is what, this is why making a plan is really important because making a plan helps you say no to certain things and choose projects. A second part of making a plan, some of us have, I'm thinking about a lovely and wonderful person in particular, but some of us have shiny ob object syndrome. And what that means is some new and awesome opportunity comes up for a grant project or a collaboration or a publication that maybe isn't like right in your kind of, um, that doesn't quite fit your academic mission statement, but you know, is exciting to you. And all of a sudden you are taking on like five new projects before you finish the old projects. So again, making a plan is, um, is what's going to help you really make good judgments that is going to prevent you from falling prey to shiny object syndrome, um, <laughs> where the new fun project, uh, it takes your time over rather than the old projects that you really need to finish like that's another thing that's important and, and that um, making a plan really helps is that you need to finish things like we can't have you know all these like half done articles sitting around things need to get finished that's why we make a plan so that's why of our seven summer steps number four is make a plan and like I mentioned at the beginning of the video um, there's a poll in our Facebook group that asks about webinar, a webinar topic that might be of interest to you. Next, for the end of next week, I'm planning a webinar and I'll give more information later. The current winning title is about plan, uh, creating a publication-centered career roadmap. And so I'll be working on, on that idea. But please, if you haven't voted for what you would like to see in a webinar, please go right ahead and do it. I'm going to review the seven summer steps where we are so far. And um, so the first one was quit one thing. Okay, make a list of everything that you are doing. Yes, everything. And <laughs> figure out which one you're going to quit. And I gave you some criteria, criteria for how to make that decision in the first video. Step two it was change your email habits. And we talked about that and I gave you some concrete ideas that included don't check email first thing in the morning and you are teaching people how available and responsive you are by you know, letting notifications come up on your phone and you answering that, those emails right away. You don't need to do that. It's not a great productivity practice. Um, so go back to video two and check that out. If you might have an email problem, I suggest some radical things in that video. So go see it. Yesterday, which was number three, was find your focus. And I talked about creating an academic mission statement, which is one of my favorite things to talk to people about. And I love hearing your academic mission statements. So if you haven't done that, go check out that video. There's also a post with a template for the academic mission statement. If you want to give it a try, would love to hear what yours is. You can put it in the comments and, um, and let people give you feedback. And number four, which is today's step of the seven summer steps, is make a plan. So I'll have more about that next week in my webinar, but um, sit down in the summer. You know, you probably have like, what, two or three weeks of classes left? Um, that's what we have, I think. Yeah. Um, sit down and make a plan. What are you going to publish next year? What are your... Um, what does your publication pipeline look like? What do you have in different stages of publication? What, what's coming up through the pipeline? Um, what are, what's your actionable plan for what you're going to do next year? Because when you decide what you're going to do, it helps you decide what you're not going to do, which is a big part of having enough time to write, is being able to say no. So thank you so much for joining me on day four of the seven summer steps. If you'd like to tweet about what you learned today, please use the hashtag seven summer steps. 
and tag me in any of those tweets. I would love to hear about about them. Also, I'm tweeting with like a reminder about this every day. You please, you know, retweet it to your um, people so that more people can join us in our group. I love taking anybody in our group, but my um, focus is on academic women and especially moms. So, uh, especially academic mamas. Um, but I would love for anybody to be in our group, especially, you know, any person who is willing to, you know, listen to the message about how to write more and also uh, be happy <laughs> in your job, which is not an easy task. So thank you for joining me. Ah, the other thing I was going to say, today's Wednesday. So tomorrow or Friday, probably tomorrow, I'm going to have for you a link to a handout version of the seven summer steps so that you can download it and you can share it with your friends and, um, and check things off your list. This can be your summer list. Uh, I hope that you're having just a wonderful day. I'm going to go back to enjoying my spring break. We're actually moving, so I'm packing boxes. Unending boxes. It's just never over. Ah. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you here tomorrow at the same time for step number five of our seven summer steps. Have a great day. Bye.